Ramonda Köpeter Müller, CEO of Muinmos. How are you? I'm good, thank, thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, you just finished a panel. Mm -hmm. What was it about? Or what, what are the main points? We were discussing uh, pretty much uh, how uh, there's so much regulatory waves taking place currently in the market, i.e. with a lot of uh, regulatory changes, Mika on its way, Dora on its way, a lot of other regulatory framework are on their way. Um, and the topic actually was, uh, the, the, the interesting thing about the topic is we're all embracing these changes. We feel that they are going to bring a lot of positive um, impact into the sector, create much more order and transparency and a framework really to operate in. Um, and the takeaways, I would say, what's actually quite interesting is a lot of institutions, banks, uh, service providers, they really care now about the, the, the response of their customers. It's no longer we are doing it this way because of regulation. We are doing it this way because of regulation, but we're also trying now to digitize and automate in order to make sure that we please our clients. And that's actually a very interesting shift from, well, we have to do it tough luck to you to actually we are doing it, but we are, we care about you. Interesting. You mentioned Mika. How is it going to affect the industry? Right now, I actually feel it's going to uh, ignite more uh, excitement in the sense that a lot of people say, are we going to see more crypto businesses closing down? I actually think it's the opposite. I think we're going to see many more crypto uh, providers uh, opening up and creating much more competition in the market, which is a good thing. And of course, with any regulatory framework like Mika, it's placing much more order in the market. And any order with a, with regulation, it's it's going to increase the the energy for companies to say we can actually invest um, our energy into operating these businesses now because we're not afraid. We know what's coming out. We see the regulation. There's a framework to operate on. Then if we do it well. We're not just going to survive, we're actually going to survive well and hopefully uh, create a, a, a product line out of it. So it's a big differentiator between uh, the EU and uh, the rest of the world, right? That, so that the, in Europe, there's going to be a very clear framework. Yeah, uh, the, definitely. I mean, Mika is creating a framework in the European Union. But what we are seeing and we will see even more of is more and more around the world are actually, I wouldn't say necessarily copying, but they're realizing they need to do something. So they're not sitting and waiting for pretty much full implementation of Mika in the European Union, but they're actually beginning to realize that, yes, they need to very, very quickly initiate uh, a, a regime that's going to take care of it. Otherwise, what's going to happen is we're going to go back to regulatory arbitrage. We're going to see the same issues again different providers operating in different jurisdictions to avoid it. And that's just simply not a game plan, not for the European Union and not for any provider that wants to operate crypto businesses outside as well. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little bit about Dora? Uh, Dora is uh, the, right now, actually, the, uh, uh, the, uh, a lot of uh, talk is going around Dora and how that's going to uh, uh, impact uh, uh, the industry. And of course, uh, we, we try to actually look at it as should really Rectex be regulated. And of course, you could argue that Dora is kind of taking care of that to some extent, mm -hmm. if not to a large extent. Uh, so we, we don't know to what extent that's going to actually impact uh, the uh, service providers in the sense of uh, uh, is it going to actually bring uh, more uh, order and more kind of compliance solutions out there that take care of everything from security protection, data, you name it. Because there are, in our uh, uh, world, there are many other regimes that do take care of that. So that's uh, that's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting. Uh, uh, waiting uh, uh, point, really. Okay, I'd like to move a little bit for, uh, to prop trading. Mm -hmm. You're very well aware of the hype and, uh, and the big shift uh, towards prop trading. Um, I think it's uh, rather a consensus right now that there some, sometimes there will be uh, regulation. I heard a uh, very, uh, uh, let's call it high profile estimation today that it's going to happen yeah. uh, in the next uh, one, two, three years. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is the, the right framework for, the, for uh, regulating uh, prop trading? To be frank with you, I think the question really comes from why is this becoming a topic? And probably the reason why this is becoming a topic is we've seen recent cases. And of course, the recent cases, unfortunately, are going to shed light, even though it's negative, 
on all prop trading uh, companies. Are you referring to payouts? To, yes, uh, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, of course, in, in that sense, I think, it would, I think there's no doubt when regulators start seeing issues that are uh, uh, what we're witnessing today, very often what comes out of that is a new regulatory framework. And that's partly to ensure that there are no ba bad actors really operating in this space, which, of course, in, you could argue in return, it will have a knock on effect on other uh, prop trading firms that are legitimately running their business and doing it in accordance with the right framework, because there is no regulatory framework. So you could, you could say that. So actually, I, I think, unfortunately, maybe some see it as unfortunate, some see it as fortunately, we will see more regulation coming on prop trading firms for sure. Do you have any uh, guess uh, who will be the first regulator to come up with it? I actually have a feeling, I know uh, quite a number of uh, 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 experts in the space may say US. I have a feeling it might be the UK as well. The UK? So I th yes, I think the UK very might, uh, might. They're very uh, fast uh, in tracking these type of issues. There are definitely uh, prop trading firms operating out of uh, those jurisdictions and some of them absolutely legitimate and some unfortunately they use it currently as bypassing regulation and operating under a separate, if you like, non-regulatory umbrella. And I, I think if I'm to, you know, say my predictions often come to reality or fruition, <laughs> I would say probably the UK will be uh, very close with the US. Do, do you have any info that the FCA is doing anything? I don't have any information, but I think uh, it's obvious from some uh, uh, investigations that are taking place. It's obvious sometimes when we receive uh, opinions from different uh, market participants where you kind of feel, is it coming from an audit or is it coming really from uh, just uh, a feel in the market? And, and, and we have a feeling at least seeing the, uh, the, uh, the framework of how the UK, for example, FCA has been operating uh, for the past years, mm -hmm. uh, we do see a trend and the trend typically comes around with uh, seeing some of these issues. And actually, you know, one could argue, is it really a bad thing to regulate prop trading firms? What, in, your, in your view, what will it do to the, to the industry of prop trading if, if there is uh, re uh, regulation? Well, hopefully it will put order into it. Hopefully it will remove uh, uh, players that should not really be in the in the space. But of course, in return, it's going to put some companies out of business as well. And that's, of course, the, the negative impact of what could come out of that. But then you could argue, well, it, were they really, you know, there for a reason? I don't think necessarily regulation has to immediately go out, you know, on capital adequacy and all the other aspects of uh, a regulation that may be a hindrance to some of the smaller firms, it could really just start with the basics of regulation. We're just putting a little bit of order into it before the regulators will expand it into something that's more a full brokerage house needs. I understand. Okay, my last question is what's next for Muinbus? What's next for Muinbus? Well, we're super excited uh, about the growth and uh, the uh, uh, scalability that we're witnessing. We're seeing a lot of traction and a lot of deep understanding in the space of digitization uh -huh. and actually trying to connect the dots. That's been one of our birthmarks, connecting the dots from A to Z. And we're beginning now to actually see the fruits of that, where our institutions, clients, banks, crypto firms, they're seeing that connectivity from literally going from the investor protection all the way to the KYC AML to the risk profiling has become a formula for success and that's something that we're definitely seeing a, a, a huge traction in and we're excited about it. That sounds like an interesting challenge. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Pleasure to see you.